Welcome everyone. I'm really excited about this experience we're about to have. And I'm gonna say it's an, gonna be an experience because I do feel that my guest, and I'm gonna be inter interviewing today, has had some really, really interesting journeys and has awakened to a lot of different energies. And I think just the discussion today is gonna really open us up to new realms. And so I'm just gonna hand it over to Krista and I would just love for you to share a little bit about your history and what you do and how you got to this place in your life. And just, you know, however you want to take us there, we're going to go on this journey with you. Okay. Um, well, I am always led by spirit. So uh, they really guide my every step. Um, I am a sovereign being. I've learned how to work with my spiritual team and um, be a member of the team. Um, quite recently, um, I, I kind of almost got into that, that urge of almost feeling like I was being bossed around by spirit <laughs> and like saying, you do this and do that and do this. And finally I told them, hey, this is a team effort. I am a member of the team and I am sovereign. And um, so that's been a journey and a half to learn how to work with your team. So a little bit about me. I am an intuitive medium. My name is Krista Marie Miller. Um, I have worked with and seen spirit my whole entire life. Um, at the age of seven, I had a really intense experience that pushed me into channeling. Um, I was at a toy store in Northern California um, and I was seven years old and um, at, up to that point I was used to seeing multiple dimensions alternate realities I was very very used to seeing crossed over loved ones spirit um, but they had never interacted with me it was always I was the observer and seeing it I my main uh, gift is clairvoyancy which means I see and I see alternate things that are not there so I am very very uh, expertise in clairvoyancy. So I, I was used to seeing, and then, um, when I was settled, I was at this toy store in Northern California and I was wandered off from my mom and, she, uh, I was walking down, uh, a toy aisle at a toy store. And when all of a sudden I saw a older gentleman kneeling by a running Creek, and again, this was a reality on top of a reality. And I was sitting there watching it and I was just transfixed by him so much because I had never seen anything in so much detail before. Like I saw the whiskers on his face, the wide brim hat, and he had, uh, you know, a pan in his hand. And when he saw me, he turned around and got so angry at me. He was so pissed off. He was like, this is my spot. This is my spot. This is my land. What are you doing here? I'm tired of all these people trespassing on my land. And he used a lot more colorful language <laughs> that I won't share here, but he just started, he was angry and he started bum rushing me and coming at me with so much force and anger and rage that in fact, he, as he came at me, he actually knocked a couple toys off the shelf because he was so just furious. But luckily he disappeared before he got too, too close to me. And at that moment, I was just petrified. I was like standing there like, like I, I didn't know what to do. Like I said, nothing had ever interacted with me before. And at that moment, my mom rounded the corner and she's like, Krista, what are you doing? What are you doing? Your boys are wandering off. And she's like, oh great, now you're knocking toys off the shelf. She's like, we're going, we're leaving, we're leaving now. And um, I was very talkative as a child, but I didn't say a single word all the way home. I was like, mm, cause I was, I was literally, I was shaking in my boots. I was so scared. Um, to the point where I was like, I'm done. If this is what it's like to interact with spirit, I am done. Uh -uh, I'm not going to experience that again. Uh, so, um, a couple days later, um, my dad used to watch this show called unsolved mysteries. And, um, on the show, there was a lot of things on there that I just was very uncomfortable with because it just hit home a little too close. It was like, you know, they talked about aliens and ghosts and things like that. And I'm just like, eh. And so each time that theme music, oh my goodness, that theme music, I still remember the theme music. As soon as that theme music would come on, I would like hightail it. 
into my bedroom because I was like, nope. But this one particular evening, it made me stop dead in my tracks because like, you know how they preview what was going to be coming up. Um, there was a psychic medium in the same exact toy store that I was at talking to the same exact spirit I was talking to. And it was just one of those serendipity moments of like, whoa, okay. And she was in control. She was confident. And I was like, I, like I said, I was just drawn into her. Um, ended up actually meeting with her and working with her later in life. Her name's Sylvia Brown. She's amazing. Um, but uh, at that moment, she just literally, that, that was probably one of my definitive moments of saying, okay, maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe this is not in my head. Here's a grown woman who's able to do these gifts. And um, again, a couple days later, I was in my tree house. Um, I, would, I had this big, beautiful China berry tree in my parents' backyard. I climbed all the way up to the top of the tree and I would sit there and now I know I was meditating, but I would let the breeze rock me and get into that flow state and the rocking would ease me. And when all of a sudden a male spirit popped up next to me and I'm like, oh no, 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 not again, not again. And so I started like, oh, I started climbing down the tree and he's like, no, no, Krista, no, no, don't worry. He's like, I am here. I'm and. I was still very hesitant when he started, especially when he called me out by name. I was like, what? <laughs> um, I used to, um, my my calming song used to be um, Blackbird by the Beatles. And um, he started singing that song. And I was like, and it made me stop, made me sit back down like, okay, this person knows me. And then he explained to me that what I had was a gift from God. Mm. And that uh, just double confirmed I was not crazy. Uh, this spirit ended up being my main spirit guide. His name is Eloise. A um, couple days after Eloise came to me, um, Yeshua came to me, who a lot of people know as Jesus, but I never knew him as Jesus growing up. And um, uh, about a week or two later, uh, Mary Magdalene came to me. And Magdalene is the main force that I work with now. She is who channels through me. And um, she's making my nose itch already <laughs> of wanting to come through. So um, uh, nose itching, uh, throat scratchy, coughing. Um, there's a lot of different signs that sh spirit shows you when they want to come talking through you. But um, yeah, I've been working with Magdalene. And then after Magdalene, um, Shiva came to me and Krishna. So I was practically raised by spirit in both Christianity and Hinduism. And um, it's my belief that they are all from the same, same star family. And uh, I don't know how much we're going to go into that today. Uh, but um, yeah, from there, I just learned how to work with spirit, communicate with spirit, um, learned my own spiritual beliefs and have been growing and had a couple times that I closed down my life. Um, but yeah, I'm just, oh, wow. I could talk forever. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's no, how it's I came about it. It's really beautiful. And so... How, you know, before you go into how you're working with spirit now and, and what sort of things you're, you're doing to help people, how you're doing that, I would love to know how you sort of transitioned from this, you know, kind of this little girl kind of like uh, getting these confirmations. And I'm wondering how your family handled that, how you sort of integrated with the rest of the world and how you were able to sort of self-actualize and integrate that mm -hmm. into who you are now and the work that you're doing because that's a big transition you know as Sheesh. you know trying to deal with like what other people will think or what your parents think or you know that kind of thing so I'm wondering how you made that transition well, it was a process um my I have two older sisters and my the middle sister uh was uh, very in touch with spirit herself and um, not as she couldn't see as in detail as I could or couldn't hear as much as I could but she was definitely in touch and she you know she, I, she was the one who actually kind of caught me talking to myself when she could see and sense and feel there was something else in the room and so she started asking me questions and you know I opened up and told her and she's told me she's like okay we don't tell people this we don't tell people she was 11 years older than me so a lot older than me and um so by the time i was seven she was 18 and she's like yeah we don't talk about this this is she's like it is a gift from god but we just don't tell people 
Um, uh, it's hard not to hold back when spirit's constantly in your ear. So my parents always thought I had a fantastic imagination, amazing imagination. Even when, you know, my mom's grandma would come through with information for her, she would be like, oh, oh, that's nice, honey. That's nice. Very, um, very avoiding of the information as a child. Very uh, pretending it was not there. Um, I am lucky enough to have a fantastic relationship with my parents now. And so we talk about my childhood a lot. Um, but at the time growing up, it was just, it was very much avoidance from my parents of not wanting to deal because I didn't know how to deal with it. They didn't know what to do. Um, and much like, you know, people with sensitive children now, it's just like, okay, <laughs> let's go do that in your room. <laughs> or, you know, very, very much. Um, I've noticed a lot more parents nowadays are not shutting their children down as much as, um, I, I mean, my parents could have told me, no, you're, it's not right. And, but I never got told no. I never got told. It was just my fantastical imagination. And to me, my imagination was spirit. I didn't associate it with it as being fake. Right. Yeah. Um, but then I, in school, um, you know, there was a couple of times where I let slip that, you know, um, a crossed over grandparent would come through and I would just let it blurt out because at that time I didn't understand boundaries and boundaries with spirit as well. And so spirit would come to me and just overtake me and, um, and so I got bullied a lot called a witch called a devil worshiper you know, called every, I was, I was ridiculed and bullied a lot in, uh, high, uh, begin, late elementary school, definitely into junior high and then early into high school to the point where in, um, high school, I, well, um, my sister moved away to Ohio when I was 10 years old. And at that age, when she moved away, my security blanket was gone. So the person that I could express to and share things to and everything, you know, this was the time before cell phones <laughs> and instant communication. So um, my, my whole foundation was just gone. And um, once that foundation was gone, I felt like she kept a special kind of extra barrier between me and spirit. And so when she was gone, it was just like spirit came pressed on me even harder to the point where I was not able to focus in school and um you know they almost diagnosed me with ADD because I couldn't focus because of constant like I said alternate realities different dimensions different timelines coming in all three are different and then plus spirit coming in crossed over it was just I was being bombarded constantly so at age 10 I finally said I'm done I don't want this anymore I, I can't handle it I don't know what to do with it um so uh I was getting I, I I begged and pleaded and prayed and meditated on spirit. I was just told spirit, I'm done. I don't want to see anymore. I kept telling them, I don't want to see anymore. I don't want to see anymore. So I was getting, uh, one day I was getting groceries out of the trunk of my mom's 88 Dodge shadow and, uh, the, um, the trunk, it was a, almost, it was almost a brand new car. And somehow the hydraulics in the trunk failed and came crashing down on the back of my head. And I blacked out and fell into the trunk and I popped out of the body and saw Archangel Michael do something into the back of my head. And when I came to, uh, they, you know, they took me to the ER. I did have a severe concussion. And, um, but at that point I stopped, I, over the next couple of days, I slowly stopped seeing, but then I became empathic. So all the gifts went from external into internal. And I became crazy, like super overwhelming empathic to the point where depression came in, anxiety came in. I got, by the time I was a sophomore in high school, I couldn't leave my room. I was so anxiety filled. I could barely leave my room. And then I ended up getting kicked out of high school and getting pushed into, into independent study. Um, ever since I was little, I always wanted to be an actress and on stage. And now I know that acting is just a form of channeling. It's a natural form of channeling. Um, so that's why I always was always drawn to acting. That um, really makes sense. I love the way you said that. I've thought about that a lot, actually, mm -hmm. um, as people are channeling or even acting. When they're acting, they're taking on characters. Yeah. Or singing or performing any type of performance. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so, uh, but my parents always, that's where my parents always blocked me and said, no, no, you can't do that. You can't take acting classes. You can't do that. No, no, no. Um, because they didn't want my heart to be broken. They didn't want to get me to get let down. Um, and so, uh, my sophomore year high school, uh, I switched into independent study, um, home study. And when I went to go take all my assessment tests, I like uh, tested into college level. And so they said, if you would like, you could start college now and just continue high school on your own. And I was like, done and done. I was so excited because when you go to register for college, you're registered as adult and your parents can't tell you what to take. <laughs> so I automatically signed up for all the theater classes I could and um, at college level and um, it, it literally probably saved my life because I learned how to express all this empathic feelings. I learned how to talk. Everybody in college, I was adored. I was loved. I was like, people just got me. They're like, especially the theater crowd, you know, I was yeah. different. I understood. I could read people's auras, you know, you name it, I could do it. <laughs> I could talk to animals. And they, so I just found my niche. I found my calling. And that's what brought me out and learn and really expression was how it really healed me from feeling all this empathicness. So wow. that was college. Um, yeah. Let me see here. Where else do you want me to go? Um, so, yeah. So now let's let's really talk about your work now and how are you bringing it forward as you know, you've, you've integrated, become this amazing expression. You, now you're mature and you're like able to bring it forward. So share a little bit with me how this is happening now for people and for your work. Yeah. Well, um, I will tell this story very briefly, but there's, you know, of course there's always more information, but, um, at age 25, I was constantly dating all these artists and, you know, actors and models and things like that. And, um, I wanted, I wanted marriage and nobody wanted to settle down. And so this gentleman came along and, um, we started dating and my dad told me, if you want that house, if you want that white picket fence, if you want those two children, you'll marry him. Cause he's an engineer. And I'm like, okay. And so, um, this man was not into spirituality. He didn't get it. It, he was actually afraid and fearful of it. Mm -hmm. Um, to the point where when he proposed to me, he said, all the spiritual stuff stops, you're done. You it's just done. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe I am done because at that point I was doing a lot of paranormal investigations and dealing with a lot of darker stuff that I wasn't properly protecting myself with. And I was tired a lot. So I was like, okay, maybe this, maybe I am done for a while. So I turned all my gifts off and at age 25, after six months of marriage, I gained hundred pounds, got fibromyalgia chronic fatigue syndrome and rheumatoid arthritis. They slapped all these labels on me because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me because I had shut down, 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 down. Of course, you could never completely shut out spirit, but yeah. I was just not, and I was not me and I was not expressing and I was not fully being there. And I stayed married to him for 15 years and it was wow. a journey and a half. Um, when I became pregnant with my son about uh, eight years into our marriage, I decided I wanted my children to know who I am. I wanted them to know who I am, know all my gifts and everything, and I wanted to raise them in a spiritual home. So I was driving to my ultrasound appointment saying, okay, all right, spirit, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm ready to open up again. Please, please, huge disclaimer, don't ever say this while you're driving. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> um, I was driving and um, I, I, I said, okay, spirit, I'm ready. And I was coming up over a hill, a hill on the 10 freeway here in Southern California. And uh, when all of a sudden traffic was slowing down and this person came up behind me and my last thought was she's not going to stop. And she didn't. I was going about 30 miles an hour and she ran into me about 80 miles an hour, rear-ended me. My little Dodge Neon uh, got squished like a can. Uh, it, she hit me so hard, her front bumper ended up in my back seat. And I, again, I had one of those clippies in my hair. The clippy went into the back of my head again. I popped, I, I got out of the body and I saw the car spinning on the freeway three times and sentinel angels were stopping traffic where I did not hit a single car. Um, I ended up on the side of the freeway. And um, when I came to, they're like, don't move, don't move, don't move. 
and they ended up having to use uh oh i'm sorry when i was when i was out of the body and the car was spinning and sentinel angels were stopping the tra traffic i looked over to my left and i saw my higher self i saw um eloise i saw magdalene i saw yeshua and i'm like looking at my you know my core team and i'm like i gotta go back huh and yes yeshua is like he's he's so humorous yeshua was like yeah you're kind of behind schedule <laughs> and i'm like oh. and so i'm like and i looked down into the car and again there was archangel michael flipping something to the back of my head and i went back into the body and they they i was the car was so crunched they actually had to use the jaws of life to drag me out of the car um and the paramedics were scratched up and i was just bruised i didn't have a scratch on me they're like how do you not have a scratch on you but we do and i'm like yeah <laughs> blessed um so uh that was my um reawakening at that point and about it's very interesting how it takes seven to eight years for cycles to go through because about seven about seven years after that experience um i slowly started developing growing taking classes um i ended up working um i worked with hay house a lot when i was 16 17 years old and um when i was in college i landed on the set of the ghost whisperer and uh knew james van prague and so i started taking classes with him and in 2018 um i ended up uh, doing a whole tour with him doing platform mediumship and it was uh, it was a beautiful experience and I just, I, I, I really stepped back into who I was, even more who I was, more empowering um, to the point where I wanted to do this work professionally full time. And um, when, I want, when I decided to start doing this work professionally, Yeshua gave me five steps on how to start stepping out, stepping, doing this work more publicly. And one of the steps was coming out of the medium closet, as he called it, coming out of the closet and telling everything everybody what you do and that was the point when I actually did tell my parents about my gifts and what I did and I remember my mom started crying and saying oh my gosh I wish I would have known I wish I would have known when you were younger I could have done it differently she's like I just didn't understand and then um, I had a lot of the experiences my dad said you know what Krista makes sense and my dad's very hard and cynical and very like reserved. He's a Vietnam vet, you know, very, very quiet. And he, and he was like, looked at me and he's like, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It just makes sense. And he's like, all those things that happened in your childhood, that just makes sense now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so they were very, uh, very warm and welcoming. And my husband was the last person I told, and he was not happy. He was not happy at all. He, uh, he's, of course he, at first he was like, I'll support you. I'll do whatever you need. But then when I would come home, um, at that point we had two children and I was taking classes and I was, you know, building my following and, you know, building my clientele. Um, I would come home like 11 o'clock at night and he'd be pissed and he would be angry and bitter. And, uh, cause he just, he, he thought he, he still thinks I'm a charlatan and I do this, I do the devil's and um it ended up ending our marriage and we yeah. uh got divorced about a year later yeah um yeah. that's kind of like what happens when you start stepping into your power it's really interesting the people around you who don't vibrate at the same frequency as you will drop off and yeah and unfortunately and it ended my marriage and um but I've been doing this work professionally full time for four years now it's 2021 and and um, yeah, and um, I haven't looked back. Um, I was at a job for 15 years and um, when I got laid off, I was like, here we go, here we go. It's time to start doing this work professionally. And yeah, it's, it's um, in a reading um, with somebody, I connect with their whole spiritual team that consists of crossed over loved ones, spirit guides, angels, ascended masters, light beings, archangels. So long as it comes in for your highest good, I allow it in. And um, usually Magdalene pops in with messages and I do channeling and um, I do live channeling events all over Southern California, hopefully going more nationally uh, next year. And yeah, I love it. And I teach. I love teaching. That's my number one thing. So beautiful. Now, one of the things right now that I'm being guided to bring forward is this next 
uncovering of human design, which is called Rave Cosmology. And it's all about the other side, which is why I was so inspired and why I've been inspired to do these calls and open this series. Um, And of course, why I wanted to talk to you. And it's really, it's like a guide to help people bring forward their encounters, their, you know, their guides and, and how to do it based on this map of, of human design. It's sort of like this, this, this mapping. Um, but with that said, I would love for you to, if you feel called to bring forward at this moment, any message or anything that might be present for you right now, for anybody who's listening, who's kind of at that point where they're sort of ready to explore more of their own spiritual awakening, more of Mm -hmm. the, you know, because I think most people who stop pushing it down, right? So Mm -hmm. most people have the ability to I shouldn't say most people, but it's available to a lot of people if you allow yourself to open up to your guides. Let's put it that way. Um, And so many people are afraid they've been shut down or they don't know how to interpret what they're getting. Yes. Um, And so I'm wondering if you could, I would love to have an experiential moment if you're willing to like you know maybe bring something through or whatever's present for you right now or something where we can kind of bring whoever's listening into the journey into the energy of whatever you feel at this point we can kind of tap into and sort of open the doors for people okay well uh magdalene i do a morning meditation every morning and magdalene was so excited about today because she had a specific message and she's like we need to share this and i'm like okay and of course i ask her what are we gonna talk about she's like don't worry about it (laughs) we got it we got it so i'm what's considered a trance channel um i'm also a physical medium which means uh, spirit takes over my body um, as in trance, I pop out of the body and Magdalene fully comes through and speaks through me. Um, I don't remember a thing that I say. That's why I'm always like, what are we talking about? Cause I never know. I don't, <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I'll allow her to come through and, That'd be awesome. and she's saying it's exactly on that topic. So here we go. Greetings. Greetings to you all. Many of you have never heard from me. I am Magdalene, what is was called Magdalene at the time of my uh, incarnation here on Earth. I was the divine partner to my Yeshua, and we were a driving force for teaching, for teaching. And this incarnation that I am helping with here, our dear Krista, I am helping bring forward the messages of the energetic bodies. For within your energetic bodies, it holds information of your past, in your present and your future. In these energetic bodies, as many of you have are searching for that sole purpose or for how to communicate with your team, it all is withholding in your energetic bodies. And how you get into developing and understanding the spiritual team that is around you, you must first understand flow and creativity and uh, manifestation. For this is held within the sixth energetic body. This is called your bliss body. Your bliss body holds the informa- holds the energy, I should say, not the information, but the energy. It holds the frequency in order to, for, to help you to manifest how to get into flow. And what flow is, is imagine, think about an activity that puts you into a sense of awe, a sense of wonder, where you lose all sense of who you are 
and you dive into whether it be painting or good book uh car repair it can be so many 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 different things gardening where you lose sense of self you lose sense of time and space and reality this is flow this is creativity life is art life is art and it should be expressed it should be expressed in a way that is uh is is an essence of who you are you are the artiste you are the creator you're the creator of who you are finding your true artistic voice is a process of faith of faith and trust do, do you trust that is a question do you trust who do you trust do you trust yourself trust is the first key to starting to communicate with spirit. Think about that. What do you trust? Do you trust yourself? Is the reason you don't create an authentic life because you don't trust yourself or spirit? When you relate all fears, worries, and doubts to and all these excuses of not wanting to connect, what you are left with is an empty feeling. So I invite you, I invite you when those fears, worries, or doubts come in, change them up to a hope, excitement. So you see these fears and doubts, they vibrate at a lower frequency. Let's take our favorite example of anxiety, anxiousness. Anxiousness, if you look at it, vibrates on the same exact frequency as excitement. It's where are you placing your attention? We always say place your attention on the intention. So instead of anxiousness, say I'm excited. I'm excited for the endless possibility of what today will bring. Every new moment is filled with possibility to create a new. So don't go and say, oh, I will begin again tomorrow. No, start now. Start in the present. Many people are in the blinding day-to-day -day routine, the grind, being disciplined in their life to get it all done. I must get this all done. They view it as hard, very grueling, with very little freedom. Have you fallen out of love with your life? Have you fallen out of love with your partner, with yourself? bring that back so how do you ignite the passion how do you ignite that uh, that flow again in order to manifest more positivity in your life first you show up you show up you get out of bed you you show up for yourself you you show up in a way that is authentic and true to you for it is going to be true and for you and not your partner not your best friend so show up, do something different, do something different, a journal, cook, read, do that one creative action to start. Even if it is just for five minutes, it's something different. Get out of routine, shake it up as they say. Also allow yourself to relax without guilt. So this is the key. Take care of you. It is a process of take care of you. Do not become weary and resentful toward anything in life. Those should be warning signs to you. When you start resenting, you are not in flow. And in turn, you will also block manifestation. Some people need mental relaxation. Some people need mental stimulation in order to get into flow. I say do both. Do both. So it is a process of relaxation stimulation relaxation stimulation repeat 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 that gets you into flow of course there are many different keys uh caffeine natural caffeine is really really good to get that stimulation going again and then relaxation the relaxation is surrender and opening and allowing and then stimulation is creation and doing so find that flow state for you relaxation relaxation stimulation back and forth you should have the energy to do this. If you are maintaining your energy, it will just naturally flow. And I could go on and on. And I know our time is limited. So I will leave you with that for now. And but you know, each one of you are a creator God. You have that spark of life within you in order to create, to manifest, to be. 
So follow this beautiful, beautiful uh, program that uh, called this human design tells you. I fully support and uplift this human design for it. It's truly a blueprint to give you a guide. So find that perfect human design reader, find that guide, find that teacher to help you, help you expand your gifts and blessings to all. I will leave you with that. Beautiful. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Love that. I'm glad. <laughs> Sometimes I come back. I'm like, did I even say anything? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, there was some messages specifically for me, I think. I mean, for everybody, I'm sure here, but as it always is, you know, I definitely, you know, as a projector, it's really important to, for me to take downtime and always have just a little twinge of guilt when I relax. And mm -hmm. I just love that she said, you know, relax without the guilt. And I also really like that process of, you know, being active, then relax and active and relax and the flow state and, um, and being creative, bringing in new creative things. And I do, I think that's really so powerful and beautiful. Um, so, wow. Yeah, I could definitely just get a feeling of the energy. And, you know, I did want to just do a quick look at your chart. Sure. You mind? Um, I, I just, love that. I'm just I, learning about this. So it's so exciting. <laughs> I just, hold on, I pulled up your chart and I was just really curious, you know, um, yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. So one of the things I've been noticing is those people who are, um, are really clear channels, mm -hmm. there's divine head and there's defined, divined, <laughs> I like that, yeah. defined, <laughs> head and Ajna, which, um, it just, it's interesting because that is how that is inspiration, but it also is a way for, um, to get such a clear insight without mm -hmm. other voices coming in. Cause when you're undefined, oftentimes people have a hard time sorting through all of the voices that are coming in or where the energies are coming from. So, so that's interesting. And then the other thing I found interesting is when I was talking about rave cosmology, um, this color one is about the angels, which as we know, that is something that has been showing up for you. Archangel is one of mm -hmm. your, you know, has been when you when you did um, have these experiences of the other side, you mentioned, I mean, there's a lot of energies you have coming through. Yes. yes. But um, so that was really interesting. The reason I wanted to look at your chart is because I'm really curious about how these maps assist people and how they're showing up through these journeys. The other thing I just want to say is that the, that 1222 and you're a manifester. So you're here to like really impact and to speak you're you to really speak what you know, which you're now doing, right? It's like, yeah. And what an impact when you don't do that, you know, mm -hmm. like you said, when you, when you got married and shut it down and gained a hundred pounds and had all of this, like when you shut it down, it's like, you know, that's just pain. It's just so much pain. It's so much pain. Yeah. I, I was in constant physical pain. Yeah. And right. emotional pain. It was, it was hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that was just really beautiful. I want to just set, send it back to you. If there's anything else you want to kind of just wrap up with everybody and maybe share how people can reach you or talk to you, or if they want to work with you or, um, you know, it's really interesting. Do you, do you teach people mediumship? Are you doing that work also, or, um, how are you yeah, bringing so this forward? I'm doing, so for, um, one-on-one trainings, I've kind of stepped back on that because I've gotten so busy. 
um, that I'm actually creating a whole, it's called Sovereignty Academy on learning to find your soul purpose. And through that, it's an eight week beginner course, introductory course of intuition devel developing. Cause I strongly feel if you want to become a channeler, you need to have your core values, your base, your foundation, even for mediumship, yeah. you need to understand and develop all your clairs. And um, so I always take people through and this uh, Sovereignty Academy will take people through um, eight weeks of intuition developing. And then um, I will have mediumship available as a side course, if that's something people want to do. But then we go into the 12 energetic bodies Dylan teaches, and then um, we go into uh, individualized readings for people. And um, that is coming. But right now I'm, I'm doing, um, I am a clinical uh, certified hypnotherapist. And so I am doing healing packages and through healing, usually intuition development comes in as well yeah. because I'm, I cannot not be a teacher. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I do have um, hypnothe hypnotherapy packages. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one readings um, where Magdalene usually, like I said, comes through and channels and they can reach me Krista Marie Miller across all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, and it's Krista, it's C-R-I-S-T-A, spelled a little bit differently, but Marie Miller, M-A-R-I-E-M-I-L-L-E-R, uh, -E Miller. <laughs> uh, more and more content is coming out. I am getting out there more and more, and um, my YouTube channel will be more, and I think I'll probably go on to TikTok and all that jazz. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much. I really Thank have been you. looking forward to connecting with you. And um, I love being able to throw in the human design piece because I know some people are like, what's that? You know, and so it's fun to kind of explore it and look at it from that. So, um, but that was just really beautiful. I love your story. I am sure everyone just got a little piece of magic today. Um from the experience of Mary Magdalene. And I just love women bringing forward the divine feminine, you know, that divine Christ energy, the feminine Christ, if you will. Yeah, um, divine feminine Christ energy, absolutely. Yeah, and it's really, really so beautiful. So I just really wanna thank you. And um, yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful way to start my day and uh yeah it's really wonderful <laughs> beautiful yeah i'll have to watch it to see what she said <laughs> it was really good really good message <laughs> awesome all right everyone well i Thank hope you, you enjoyed i'm sure whoever's listening in will want to go back and re-experience the channeling is really really powerful um so Thank you all for being here. And again, you know, my intention is to bring, keep bringing forward these opportunities and messages and just allow people, you know, the space to open up their, open up your gifts and whatever way, shape they're going to show up for you because it's needed now. It's needed now in the world more than ever. And, uh, it's a wonderful way to begin the healing journey. Mm -hmm. it really is and spirit magdalene talks about human design all the time she loves it so it's definitely endorsed by spirit <laughs> i always wonder about that because i you know i haven't heard a lot of people talk about it a lot of channels talk about it um and i think partly that's just because it's so new um but i do think it is yeah it's a good it's a good map for people Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, and bringing spirit into it, I think is really important. It's so cool. So, I love it so yeah. much. Yeah. I do have a question. Yeah. The one energy you said is angelic. Have you found that it's also like light being as well? Well, yeah. So the dynamic of the rave cosmology is interesting because it usually has a lot of different there's a lot of different factors to it. So, um, so there's usually three guides that are, and this is all based on 
Ra's encounter with the voice. Mm -hmm. So according to Ra, there was, for him, there was three guides. And so I don't necessarily know if that's going to be how for everyone, but that's how he, he explains it, that there's usually a trigger, some type of energetic trigger, and then there's a guide, and then there's the awakening to spirit. And wow. the spirit is the one that's bringing forward the education. So the, you know, the one of the, but there's usually your color kind of is the, um, one of the first energies that you're going to sort of resonate with. And so for you, yours is, um, was angels. So yeah, so that it is interesting. It's a new piece of human design that kind of will help people to crack open to encounters if they've never had them before, or if they're misinterpreting them. So because a lot of human design talks about those, the not self, so where your mind may be coming in and cluttering the message, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it helps to sort of sort through the messages people are getting, the encounters are having, you know? So um, it's just like how it is in this realm. It's sort of like a map. So it's sort of a map to the, the other realm as well. So, yeah. So neat. So, so yeah. Neat. I'm so happy and excited you're bringing this forward. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. me too. It's been a really, really wonderful, wonderful experience. And um, I I love the energy of Mary Magdalene. So thank you so much for that. She's, You're welcome. she's definitely such a divine gift. She can be a little harsh, but she is divine. Yeah, she's, she delivers it smoothly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Awesome. All right. Well, is there anything else you want to leave people with? No, just uh, step up, live your authentic life, learn your own sovereignty of who you are. Don't base it on what anybody else says. Yeah. Find your empowerment. Yeah. I love that. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, cool. Bye, everyone.